Hi, welcome to another episode of Mending with Dr. B. And today we'll be looking at the knee physical examination. So basically we'll be looking at inspection, palpation, and also the range of motion of the knee with some specific special maneuvers. Okay, come with me as we step. Hi, my name is Dr. B. And I'll be doing a knee physical examination on you today. So basically I'll be inspecting and I'll also be palpating that is touching your knee and also be doing some specific special maneuvers. What's your name please? Sabrina. Sabrina, please help your consent. Yes. Okay, and let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to be doing is inspecting the knee. So I'm going to tell her to kindly stand up for me and just take a walk. Now you observe on inspection of the gait that the knee will be extended when you are actually in the heel strike phase but when you are in the swing or the stance phase of the gait you notice that the knee will be flexed. Please sit for me, thank you. Now we we'll continue our inspection. Now based on the MSK rule, whenever you are inspecting, think your skin, muscle, think the bones. Now let's go there. On skin, you rule out that there's no sign of any form of skin markings. They're like your papus, your petechia, papura, ecchymosis, um, your macos, your vesicles, and the likes. Now, you also talk about the fact that you notice that there is no some form of muscle atrophy of the quadriceps muscle. For example, you talk about the fact that you observe basically there's no form of deformity on the knee. Now, don't forget when we talk deformity, you think the genovirus or the genovirus. Now, we must rule out inflammation. So, talk about the five cardinal signs of inflammation on inspection. So, you're inspecting, you're looking, you touch, she's no sign of pain, no sign of warmth, no sign of loss of function as you can see she worked, no sign of redness or swelling. Now, when we have done with that, we look at the alignment, we look at the contours of the knee. We also focus on the olors. The normal olus. In a situation where we can't find the olus, signifies there's a form of swelling, edema, effusion going on there. Now we go to palpation. On palpation, don't forget that the knee actually comprises of three major bones. So your femur, tibia, and the patella. So basically, you palpate all the additional structures. So thinking your patella, the media and lateral menisci. You can palpate your ACL and PCL, so we'll talk about that when we put some special maneuvers. Now, on palpation, you're also trying to rule out any form of subluxation, dislocation, fracture, and uh, lights. Now, when you're done with palpation, there's a special test of palpation we must look out for. That is the knee effusion test. So the first one is this, the bulge sign. So basically, you milk downwards, medially. Now, in this way, you're pushing the fluid this way, then you tap here. This is usually used for small effusions. But we also have on that which is called the balloon. So basically, the leg is extended, and you push downward this way, and you're observing. This is usually done for large effusions. Then we also have another which is the balloting. Now for the balloting, you just pick two fingers here. Now you're actually pressing on the super patella pouch. At this junction, pressing on E, the moment you remove your hand, immediately there will be a reverse of the fluid and then you can just palpate immediately. Those are the three signs. Now, there are some additional structures you want to palpate to. Take, for example, we talk about the supra patella pouch. We talk about the anserine borsa, the semimembranous borsa, prepatella borsa. And with that, we can go to range of motion. On range of motion, you think of two things active or passive. So, passive basically is when I help my patient. So, watch out. Now, this is extension. Flexion, inside rotation, external rotation. Now, on active, you let the patient do it his or her self. Now, don't forget you do it on both knees. Now, you compare both knees to see if there is any form of 
asymmetric or any form of deformity issues going on. All right, with these we go to our special maneuvers. Now, they are based on the ligament test. So let's first start with meniscal test. It's called the McMurray test. What does the McMurray test entail? Now, watch me. You focus on the ankle, and we go for the medial meniscus. First of all, you place your hand on the medial area just to stabilize the medial meniscus. And what do you do? You go this way. Now, with this action, you are tensing the medial meniscus. But when it comes to the lateral meniscus, they test it this way. You put your hand here, and you also go do a, you go this way. In that way, you're also what tensing the lateral meniscus. And with that, you're done with the McMurray test. Let's go to the second test, which is the Vegas or the virus test. Now, when it comes to the Vegas or virus test, just think of the shape. The R in virus, just think bow. So bow leg, the vagus, think of it as what? Killing. So they are used to test two different collateral ligaments. The vagus is specific for the media collateral ligament. Let's go. So your action is based on the tie and the leg. So you pull your tie going in medially, and your leg is going what? Out one leg, this way. So you are tensing the media collateral ligament. Watch. You see the difference compared to media meniscus where you just place your hand here. Now, that's the vagus test. The virus test is this way so you're going outward this way and you're coming inward to your leg so this so you see it will form the bow shape so the vagus is also called the media collateral ligament test and could also be called word the abduction test but what about the virus it's called the adduction or the lateral collateral ligament test Okay, with that we go to the last segment of the test, which is the anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament. Now, the first step is the anterior drawer test. So basically, you place your hand just at the public territory here. And you push forward like a jerk. Now, during this jerk, what happens is the tibia bone jerks forward. That signifies positive. The moment the tibia bone checks forward, but in case of posterior draw test, you push backward this way. Now, in that situation, also the tibial bone push backwards. It signifies what? Positive posterior cruciate ligament here. Okay, then we have the last test, which is called the Latchman test. Now for the latchment that is specific for the anterior cruciate ligament. Now what do you do? The leg, the knee is placed in the extended form, and you place one hand down on this, and all you do is just push forward this way. Now in a situation whereby your tibial bone comes with you, it's positive also for anterior cruciate ligament too. Now there are two specific tests for the patella. One is the patella friction test, and the other is the patella apprehension test. Now, for the patella friction test, all you do is the leg supine, you place the hand above the patella this way, and you ask the patient to please contract their quadriceps. Don't forget the quadriceps actually does what? Extension. So, by the time you are contracting, if the patient has some form of pain, it's a sign of patella femoral pain syndrome. Now the second one is patella apprehension test. And in that one, same scenario, extended, but you, with your two thumbs, you literally just push the patella immediately, this way. And in case of any form of pain, it's also positive for the patella apprehension test. With that, we are done with how physical examination on the knee. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and see you some other time. Thank you. You're acting now. Okay. Oh, you didn't even do the. <coughs> you didn't even cough.